I'm Julie Zenner along with Dennis Anderson and here's what's coming up on Almanac North. 1,200 delegates have converged on Duluth this weekend for the Minnesota DFL convention. Endorsements will happen tomorrow but the state party chair is right here tonight. The last two winters have not done much to improve Duluth's chilly reputation. Even our neighbors in the Twin Cities have been piling on. And a new Duluth youth group is out to prove teenagers are interested in more than just texting and YouTube. These stories, the business news and more next on Almanac North. and welcome to Almanac North. Thanks for watching. Denny, it's been a beautiful spring week after uh, uh, last winter and we'll take it. It, it has been brutal. absolutely balmy for, for what, a week and a half now around here. Yeah, you're starting to get some nice color well, in your face. Well, there so you go. Spending, uh, time spending, the cabin. spending time in the sunshine. That's good, but we uh, don't have time for that right now. We We've don't. got lots to talk about, so let's get started. All right, thank you very much, Julie, and welcome everyone. Democratic Farmer Labor Party delegates from across the state have gathered in Duluth tonight for the state convention while Republicans are holding their convention in Rochester this weekend. Now, there's not a lot of mystery for the DFL, with endorsements of U.S. Senator Al Franken and Governor Mark Dayton a sure thing. But the convention in Duluth and the Republicans meeting at the same time in Rochester will set the stage for a summer of campaign jousting. Joining us now is Ken Martin. Ken is the chair of the Minnesota DFL party. Welcome, Ken. Thank you for being here. What's the DFL message this weekend, Ken? Well, the, the message as uh, thousands of delegates are coming from all over the state, uh, every corner of the state, gathering here in Duluth this weekend, and we're going to really celebrate the fact that in 2010 and then again in 2012, we made promises to the voters and we kept those promises. Uh, we talked about building a better Minnesota, and that's exactly what Senator Franken and Governor Dayton and all of our DFLers on the ballot this fall have done. And so it's it's really going to be a, a, a great convention filled with lots of, lots of energy, yeah. excitement, and enthusiasm. What will be the news headlines this weekend coming out of that convention? Well, I think the biggest uh, news headline is the fact that the DFL will be unified. We're going to leave this convention ready to take our message to the general election voters. While the Republicans are coming out facing, facing nasty Republican uh, primaries, we're actually going to be able to have conversations directly with the voters about what we've done for Minnesota and what we'll do if we're reelected. Now, as we mentioned in the intro, there's not a lot of intrigue about who's going to be nominated. You won't be going into many primaries. Uh, does that make the convention less exciting for the participants, or, or how do people feel about it? I don't it? think so. In fact, uh, just the opposite. We have so much to talk about, so much uh, success to celebrate. If you just think about the last two legislative sessions uh, here in Minnesota, which were remarkable in terms of the amount of legislation that was passed to benefit people in this state, there's a lot to celebrate, and we have a lot of great stories to talk about. And I think the speeches that Senator Frank Franken and Governor Dayton uh, will give tomorrow will really rile up the uh, crowd, energize them, and uh, really compel them to go back to their hometowns and talk about what a great job DFLers have done. What are the major issues facing the state legislature next year? Well, I think the biggest one is going to be transportation funding. As you know, uh, unfortunately, the last two legislative sessions, uh, there hasn't been a, a real holistic uh, approach taken to figuring out some transportation funding in the state. It's been more of a, a Band-Aid and patchwork mm -hmm. approach to transportation uh, problems in this state. There's over $30 billion worth of transportation projects that need to be funded, and I think the governor and uh, DFL legislative leaders are going to try to tackle that next legislative session. The DFL has really been kind of holding the trifecta down in the Twin Cities with the governor's office in both the House and the Senate. Um, do you think that it's going to be a, a tough fight to keep that one-party rule in St. Paul? 
Well, you know, I, I, I think um, I've always said it's amazing what happens when you elect people who care about governing. You get good government, and that's what's happened the last two years. And so it's less about one-party control and more about what we've actually done to deliver on the promises we made to voters. If you look at what Republicans did when they were in power, they shut down government, they raised property taxes, uh, they borrowed money from our schools. And then you look at what DFLers have done in the last two years that they've been in control. It's pretty remarkable what they've done to help middle-class Minnesotans and to help build a better Minnesota for all. Representative Roger Reinert of Duluth is not up for re-election this year, but recently he did lose the endorsement of the of the local Teamsters Union. Is that going to hurt him two years from now? Well, you know, look, we're not focused on uh, what happens two years from now. Uh, I'm sure Senator Reinert will do fine in his election. Really what we're focused squarely on is what we need to do the next five months to make sure that we re-elect Senator Frank and Governor Dayton and re retain the uh, House majority. Do endorsements mean less now than they did, say, a decade or so? No, ago? in fact, I think endorsements Endorsements mean more, particularly uh, when you think about uh, the fact that we have close to 1,400 delegates coming from all parts of the state. Endorsements really, truly matter. Uh, we have a great grassroots system here in this state that allows ordinary people to have a huge influence in not only the platform of the DFL party, mm -hmm. but also in terms of who we select to endorse and, and nominate. And so I think endorsements still matter. They reflect uh, the grassroots of the party, and, and I'm excited about seeing that happen this weekend. Any bad blood given the fact that the governor himself kind of bypassed the whole endorsement process last time well, around and the, still beat out the endorsed candidate? The, the governor asked me if he should show up. The last <laughs> time he came up to Duluth, he wasn't allowed on the floor. But, uh, you know, it is uh, amazing what uh, four years will do. I, I, I think people uh, still remember that convention, but obviously are excited about endorsing the governor this time in Duluth. The DFL has the governor's office. You've got majority in both houses, all constitutional offices in the state, and both both U.S. Senate seats and five out of the eight seats for the U.S. House of Representatives. What does the DFL party, the Democratic Party, need to do to hold on to all of that? Well, I think we need to do th two things. One, we need to talk about what we've done for people in this state. And again, the, the list of accomplishments have been great. Everything from all-day kindergarten, early childhood education, freezing college tuition, uh, gay marriage, uh, raising the minimum wage, the Safe and Supportive Schools Act, women economic security, a uh, strong bonding bill. You can go down the list of things that we've done to improve people's lives. Uh, but that's one thing we need to do is remind people that we did that for people in the state. The second, and this is really important, is let DFLers know the urgency and the stakes of this election. See, it's not enough just to talk about what we've done for people. We need to let them know that if the Republicans are in control in St. Paul, that they're going to roll back the clock and reverse all the progress we've made these last two years. How much attention are you paying to what's going on in Rochester this weekend? Well, paying quite a bit of attention. I, I know I just got a report from my communications director as I was driving over here about the uh, Senate results. And, uh, you know, again, uh, I, I'm not worried this may sound arrogant, but I'm not worried about the Republican candidates. I, I think in both the Senate and the governor's race, it's a weak field of candidates. Uh, my biggest uh, concern is, is uh, Democrats not showing up on November 4th. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that Democrats understand the stakes of this election and, and make sure that they get out and vote. Democrats are notorious, DFLers are notorious for dropping off and not showing up in midterm elections. And I believe if we, uh, we've got a great story to tell, and if we get that message out to voters and explain the urgencies of this election, people will show up and support our all right. Ken Martin, thank you very much. DFL State Chairman. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Mm -hmm. Now, let's dig into our news file archive for a look at what was making news 25 years ago this week. These four bumbling wolf pups have every right to be a little shy. They're trying to figure out their new surroundings with over a hundred people looking over their shoulders. You think they look shy? Yeah. I, my mom said, see that? Because their tail is shaking, they're scared. The pups are the star attractions at phase one of the International Wolf Center in Ely. The center has been in planning stages for several years, and now that it's open, folks feel it's something to howl about. In addition to the pups and howling contest, visitors made tracks through the wolves and wilderness display, picking up bits of wolf trivia along the way. 
131 wolf encounters and only six times did the wolves ever die. The center won't be complete until 1992 when the Minnesota Science Museum's Wolves and Humans exhibit moves in. Between now and then, nearly $3 million in state money is needed for a new building to put it in. In Ely, Julie Zenner, KDLH News. There is little doubt that the past two winters have stressed even the hardiest of longtime residents. So imagine if you had moved to Duluth two years ago from milder climes and had to endure back-to-back -back record setting winters. Twin Cities Public TV's David Gillette has relatives in this predicament and he recently took the Zenith City to task in one of his award-winning illustrated essays. Let's take a look. Hey Duluth, you know we love you, but seriously, what are you doing? Are you trying to wreck me? Listen, you need to hear something. I have some family who recently did a brave thing. They left the relative climate security of Salt Lake City and they gave you a shot, a chance, with their lives, their kids, their hopes, their dreams. Their only mistake was that they moved to you in 2012. And since then, you've been flagellating them with two of the worst winters on record. And it's not helping that you decided to drop 856 more inches of snow in April. This is what you've done to them. They're digging trenches in their yard for the dog. They're fighting ice dams with a roofing hammer. They're losing feeling in their hands, in their heated garage. And the whole time, I can see it in their eyes. They want to love you. They really do. But all they can think is we've made a terrible, terrible mistake. So here's what I need. Now that spring is finally here, I need you to really go for it. I need you to toss out some of those lake sunrises you're always bragging about on the postcards. I need you to knock it out of the park when it comes to those fortifying hikes along the shore. Better yet, I need your mayor, the Don Ness guy, to personally march down Crosley Street and give them a hug. Because honestly, Duluth, if you don't get your act together soon, you're gonna have to redo the math on your population sign. And that will not look good on the postcards. And as luck would have it, David Gillette is in town covering the DFL convention, so we invited him to the studio to see just how friendly Duluthians can be. And you dress for the weather. You even have ice in your water. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? We do have, there's ice everywhere. Did you look out on the lake? Oh, I can't believe it. Well, Julie, Dennis, I want to let you know, tell you the truth, I have spent a lot of time in Duluth the last two winters, and it has taught me one thing. It has taught me that if Duluth serves you lemons, You'd better burn those lemons to keep warm. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Couldn't quite fi figure where, where you were going with that one. But what inspired you to, uh, to take on Duluth in one of your illustrated essays? Did you just have like some, some miserable family gatherings with people complaining? Because we want the same thing. Under this TPT parka, I have a big warm heart that loves this city, and we want people to come to Duluth and stay in Duluth. I think it's just a matter of incentives. And that's why I actually had a policy proposal for you tonight. Ooh. Huh? Go ahead. I'm thinking that if you are new to Duluth, if you've just moved to Duluth in the last year, for every day in that first year that it goes below zero degrees, you don't pay property taxes. Whoa, what do you hey, think, I Mayor Ness? <laughs> Mayor Ness? <laughs> Mayor Ness. <laughs> well played, Almanac North. Uh, uh, good to see you. Good yes, nice to see you. Oh, no, of Duluth, course not. That was wonderful. You wonderful. Uh, that's, I don't know what to do now. I feel this is, uh, this is a hijacking. Uh, Mayor Ness, so I need to ask you, what, what's my family to do now that it's spring? I want them to love this city as much as we do. Well, I think it's important that your family understand that Every Duluthian goes through the same process every single spring. Every spring, people want to, you know, they, they, they're disgusted with the, the, the community and with the city and with the, the length of the winter, but then we fall back in love with uh, the city every year. It's kind of like, you know, Joni and Chachi kind of, uh, you know, fall <laughs> in oh, love. The old Joni and Chachi <laughs> bit. Yeah. Well, Mayor, you're trying to grow Duluth's population to 90,000 people. Um, does this kind of publicity hurt those efforts at all, or is any publicity good publicity? Well, we brought four. I just want to put for the math. If you're no, absolutely. Track. Yeah, so <laughs> okay. One, two, three, four. Yeah. No, it's it's great. I mean, it's it's all in good fun, and I think that's the other thing about Duluth is is that we don't take ourselves too seriously. When you have the ice out on on the lake, people are out in swimming suits and kind of on on those little icebergs, and so I really enjoyed David's. Uh, uh, <laughs> what do you call him? 
illustrated. illustrated you were very good to be on Twitter. You respond on Twitter. You're great on Twitter, so no, I appreciate it. We that. used to call those a jab. Yeah, yeah, he, he rolled with the punches very well, yeah, so no. I cheers and, with my And really, Mayor, Duluth has become a very promotable city, not only in the summer, but in the winter. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I think that's one of the things that we're trying to promote uh, is uh, that out, outdoor adventure in a year round and, and that, you know, a lot of cities uh, in today's America are very much the same. You know, they kind of present the same uh, commercial areas and they try to all kind of fit that same model and Duluth is something that's very different and authentic and unique and we're trying to capitalize on those differences. In fact, um, Duluth is up against Minneapolis right now in a contest for best uh, best uh, town for 2014 and it's up against Minneapolis and you each kind of have a horse in that race. So um, well, the geography make, up here is incredible. Yeah, make the case though for Minneapolis and then and then maybe we can uh, well, I love Minneapolis. <laughs> I would say we have a lot of lakes, great lakes down in the metro. We have great bike paths. Mm -hmm. You can't beat the food scene, the theater scene. I don't know, that's four things. Yeah. No, we have a great lake. <laughs> you, do, you, you have the best lake. <laughs> well, this is an, uh, the, the contest is about uh, from Outside Magazine, and it's about uh, the, the best outdoor adventure city in, in America. And, and so the case that we're making is, you know, Minneapolis, we all love Minneapolis and for that urban experience. But if you want an outside experience, you come out to Duluth and you, you get on a sea kayak out onto the lake or you, you uh, take our, the hiking trails and the biking trails that we have here. And, and that's why I think we're uh, probably the right choice for, for that particular contest. Mm -hmm. We tend to call ourselves hardy people who live up here. <laughs> you would maybe think we're foolish. Can I introduce you to Please. my hardy people? Yes. <laughs> Can I just hijack the show and ask my family Absolutely. to come up right Absolutely. now and meet the mayor? On These are the North. four who have moved to yes. Duluth yes. who want a hug from the mayor. They do want a hug. And they came all <laughs> up. These are my family members. This is young Micah, Kieran. Oh, Matt, that's, come a, on over here. that's a camera come on person. Over. Keep coming on. Come on. Keep coming. Keep coming. Hey. And here they okay, are, I get my a hug. family, everybody. Here, come here. Come here. Introduce the members of this your is, family. This is young Micah. He's the best hugger in the family. <laughs> Matthew Judd, oh, Laura wow. Judd, and young Kieran. All right. Hey, hey, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, how lucky is this? Thanks, man. Great job. Can I see this one? What is this? <laughs> Kieran. Hi, Kieran. Beautiful. So here's the four we brought to Duluth to contribute to your population. Well, see, so the population <laughs> went up. Thank so you for do you think them so now well. that now that the weather has turned, are we starting to make the case that your family will stick around for a absolutely, while? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm up here also <laughs> to cover the convention, but I'm sticking around all weekend just for fun. My whole family and I, we're going to do all the great things that Duluth has to offer, and I'm going to be pushing the city hard on your behalf. I, I love it. I love all it. right. Well, thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. So Thanks, David. For, uh, sharing Thanks, Mayor. Your humor with right. us. Thanks, family. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Nice job. Nice job. A group of Duluth High School students is out to prove that teens have more on their minds than text messages and technology. Members of Youth for Duluth say their goal is to unify the community across all five high schools and volunteer for charity events. Joining us now is Lauren Hesch, who came up with the idea of Youth for Duluth, and Joe Zimmerman is also a member of Youth for Duluth. And welcome, thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. So it sounds like this is an idea that kind of uh, bubbled up in your brain and came together, you know, as you sat in your room. Talk about how it started. Well, I think that describes it pretty accurately. Um, back in, I think it was around December, I was just thinking about all of the friends in our, my city that I don't know and all of them that I'm yet to make, but I haven't had the chance because I, I barely know anybody from the other schools, Denfeld, Marshall, Harbor City, Lakeview Christian Academy. I mean, I didn't know people there, and I think it's really mm -hmm. important that the youth in our community be unified in some way. Mm -hmm. And what better way is there than through volunteering and making our city better? So how did you get started? You know, you have this idea, but how do you take it from here and actually start making those connections? Well, it was a lot of 
talking to my friends and saying, hey, do you know anybody at Denfeld who'd like to get in on this project? Do you know anybody at Marshall or Harbor City? I knew Joe already. Mm -hmm. So that was a good connection, but it was a lot of just reaching out sure. to mutual friends. And so Joe, what kind of jobs are you looking to volunteer? Really, anyone who will take us. We <laughs> <laughs> House painting, and no, no. <laughs> no, actually, we did do, um, we worked on renovation for a house for Pavsa. Really? There, it's a safe haven for mm -hmm. people of, you know, abuse. Mm -hmm. And really, actually, all it was was digging a big hole of clay. And that was fun. But whatever we do, we generally have fun with it. We've done stuff for the Nordic Center. We've got a calendar set up for a bunch of different volunteer events all throughout June, January, er, June, July, and August. So can the general population get a hold of you and ask you to give them some help? Or how, how does that work? Well, right now we have a Facebook page set up, we have an email, and my cell phone is always on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what we've been going on. Yeah, as a, a parent of some recent high school graduates, I know how busy high school students are. You've got all of the studying, you've got you know, sports and music and plays and all of this other stuff that, that kind of becomes an expectation of the high school experience. Joe, do, do kids have time to volunteer? I, I, when do kids have time to volunteer? I guess really whenever you have free time, that's wasted time. <laughs> 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 no, um, yeah, a bunch of kids are doing stuff, but schools like Marshall, they require 10 hours of community service throughout the summer. Uh -huh. And a lot of other kids who are in clubs such as Key Club or, you know, really anything, I think they really want to get out into the community and volunteer. And I think if they were to have the conduit like Youth for Duluth, they would really jump at it, you know. I think they would really want to contribute to our society and break down the stereotype that we're a bunch of narcissists. <laughs> Lauren, you're from, you're from East High School. I am. But this isn't, Youth for Duluth isn't only for students from East High School, is it? Oh, no, not at all. Um, our main objective being to better the community, um, essentially by unifying the kids who go to all five of the area high schools. So we all get to know each other better while making a difference in our community. Mm -hmm. Are you surprised at um, adults' response to, to what is happening and what's going on? Because you've had some you know, pretty strong advocates with the mayor and city councilors, and <laughs> did that surprise you at all? Very much so, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy. We went into the mayor's office, all, what, 10, 14 of us? <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing what to expect. <laughs> Not at all. We went in there. He was incredibly inviting, incredibly open, and really, he's like, what do you need? And we told him, sure. <laughs> And yet it's still really important for this to remain a by teen, 14 effort, mm -hmm. I, I imagine. You don't want adults swooping in and taking it from you. That's been the really great thing about this process is we've had adults there to help us along and kind of buoy us to what sure. we need from them. But a lot of adults are just telling us, this is your thing. This is your thing. Go for it. You go out and do it. And that's what we're trying to do. It sounds like it's really connecting with the community. Do you see this as something that could perhaps continue again next year and, and maybe be something that Duluth will be noted, noted for for years to come? That would be the dream. <laughs> it would be. I mean, have you thought about that possibly or more than yeah. just maybe one summer? Well, right now um, we're still kind of in our inception and we're hitting the ground running with our first event tomorrow. But what we really want to focus on in the coming months is to set up a kind of a masthead, like a chair, vice chair, and a bunch of subordinates. So that way, when Lauren and I leave, we can, you know, sure. hand it off to the next generation. Is that Scavaganza tomorrow? Yeah. Yep. What is that? <laughs> you go ahead. Okay, Scavaganza is an on-foot scavenger hunt around Duluth's downtown and Canal Park in a little bit of Park Point areas, and we're matching up teens. You sign up in a partnership and then we're going to pair teens with another partnership hopefully from another school mm -hmm. so then you'll be with a friend that you already have and then one that you've yet to meet mm -hmm. and then we have a list of I think it's 82 different clues that people are going to go out and find and take a picture of and upload to Twitter with the hashtag scavaganza 
Then back at the Nordic Center, we're going to scroll through the Twitter feed and keep track of all the points. Mm -hmm. and You've got this yeah. well planned. And, <laughs> and can people just show up for it, or do they have to register ahead of time? What are the details? We on have that? a registration hour at 2 o'clock for people mm -hmm. who have not registered online, and then um, we'll go from there. And is it strictly open to, to high school students, or yes, is it, it young is right adults now. as well? Right now, high school yep, students? Right now. Okay, and that's the scavaganza. Yep. And first prize is actually dinner with the mayor. Oh, very nice. Ah. Yeah. Excellent. And we just saw he's a pretty good hugger, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Lauren Hash, Joe Zimmerman, thank you so much for coming in. Good luck with this. It's a really exciting project. Thank you for thank having you us. Thank you both very much. Thank you. It's time now for the week's business news from Business North. After six years with Wisconsin Indian Head Technical College, President Bob Meyer is leaving to become chancellor at the University of Wisconsin Stout in Menominee. During Meyer's time at WITC, the college has been ranked three times in the top ten among two-year colleges in the nation. He also strongly advocated technical college education and manufacturing careers throughout Wisconsin. Meyer will remain with WITC until August the 16th. In the upcoming weeks, the college will name an interim president and begin a search for the college's eighth president. Facing stockholder pressure to restructure its board and management team, Cliffs Natural Resources said on Tuesday it would further reduce its expected full-year 2014 capital spending. The cut would be approximately $100 million. That's in addition to the company's previously announced capital spending decrease of about $460 million from 2013. Cliff said the spending reduction is driven by low iron ore and coal prices on the spot market. Company revenue has been down sharply for more than a year along with its stock price. A shortage of revenue at the University of Wisconsin-Superior will force campus administrators to indefinitely suspend some academic programs and trim spending in other areas. Master's programs in visual and communication arts, library science, reading and reading specialties will not accept new students. The same is true of jazz studies, an undergraduate program. UWS and other UW campuses have become financially strapped because state funding has been reduced, enrollment has declined, and a freeze has been placed on student tuition, factors that Chancellor Renee Wachter dubbed a perfect storm. For more on these and other business stories, visit businessnorth.com. And if you have a comment, now is the time to call. Dial 218-788-2849 to leave a message or send an email to almanacnorth at wdse.org. You can also visit the WDSE website for program schedules, updates on your favorite PBS shows, and news about the station. And uh, Denny, it was a really fun show. Uh, thanks to our colleagues from TPT and the Twin Cities for being such good sports and coming in. They really like Duluth. I know they do. I think <laughs> I think they do too. And what's not to love? Absolutely. And thanks for the, All right. the mayor for played along tonight. So, he did. Right. For Denny and the crew here at WDSC, I'm Julie Zenner. Have a great weekend.